Hello! Today I shall show you how to restore garbage photographs into something a lot more usable. So, first of all, we begin by examining the issues the source has. This depends from source to source. Some have poor patterns, some are just too small in resolution. This one, however, does not have those two issues, but however, it is incredibly blurry. It has lost a lot of detail, especially if you look at um, the forehead and the hair. There's, um, sure, there's noise there, but actual photographic detail is on the cheeks here, on the shirt, it's gone. It is also incredibly overexposed. So. And you should go over here, where I have already started doing a tiny bit. First of all, with restoring photographs, at least ones that like aren't already, weren't already in color, it is preferable that they are fully black and white. Uh, I will explain this later, but it is quite helpful. So, first of all, in Photoshop, you go to Camera Raw Filter. It is an incredibly useful tool, and this is why Photoshop is just generally better than something like PaintNet or GIMP for this. No offense to people who have used GIMP and PaintNet, etc. for photo restorations. Honestly, they are incredibly skilled, but if you are, your, if you are trying to get this done a lot faster and a lot more efficiently, Photoshop is the best tool for this, especially because of the camera or all filter, but there's also some other features I will show later. So in the camera raw filter, you see a couple options here. One is to deal with overexposure. This is a really useful tool as it allows you to reduce the exposure of a photograph. Now it does overall also darken it quite a lot. But uh, so you will need to like judge for yourself when to use it and when not to. In this case, it is applicable to use it. So, first of all, exposure. Then, second of all, not reducing highlights because that reduces highlights overall, but reducing the whites is that reduces only the brightest areas. This is because we are trying to aim at destroying. Um, the overexposure uh, just in general. First of all, we get this. Now, this may not seem like a much right now, but it is going to become very important later on. You copy that with Control A and Control C, then undo with Control Z and um, back to like the previous image and then you copy paste it into a new layer. This is so that you can compare some features here and there as you'll be editing this image. You also duplicate the layer. There's no singular method for photo restoration. Now, there's uh, still a lot of issues with this photograph, aren't there? What you'll want to do is possibly sharpen it. Now there's a couple of ways to do it. I prefer just sharpen more or just sh the or just the regular sharpen. I guess in this case it was a little too much. But plenty of others I know have done it with just a sharpen tool, which is over here where the smudge and blur tools are. Speaking of smudge and blur tools, they are also incredibly useful. Specifically, not as much in this case where the image is blurry, but in other cases where an image has like a rougher texture, it is very useful for that. Now, there are a couple rough texture spots on this image, so I will show you how to deal with that as well. On smudge tool, you won't want it to go over like 10% in my opinion. I know a lot of people prefer it to just have it on a little higher settings and then be very careful with it, but I'm not a particularly careful person, so I prefer it to be on lower uh, strength settings. So once you've selected your strength settings, you'll start smudging. Now, why would you do this when the image is already very blurry? Because here's the thing. A lot of this supposed detail on this image is not really proper detail. 
you have to be really careful, especially around the eyes, which is why I'll change the settings to 1% over here. This is like the most important area of a portrait, in my opinion, this, uh, uh, the area around the two eyes and the upper nose and the eyebrows. It is, in my, uh, if you mess it up, if that looks uncanny, that severely reduces your portrait quality more than basically anything else. Um, it also reduces your overall restoration quality quite a lot, as if the eye area um, looks off, which is an area that humans generally uh, gravitate towards looking at, it will just consistently look off to you, and or at least to others. All right, so here you see the burn tool, right? The burn tool and the dodge tool are also pretty useful for this. Especially, like, if there are still some details on the original image, but they have just been utterly washed out and destroyed. So you will need to make educated guesses. This is why when you have uh, the dodge tool uh, and the burn tool, you need to apply the dodge tool mainly to highlights and the burn tool mainly to shadows. So you just... Uh, you just do it a bit carefully. But as you can see, the nose has already gotten a bit more shape here, and so has the mouth area and the eyebrows. You just continue doing this for some time until you get something that looks a bit less uncanny. Um, that's too much. Um... Usually these areas over here, just under the brows, are like really dark. But that's commonly not seen in such low quality photographs. Uh, usually you want to darken these areas here. There we go. I think... I still need to smudge the, uh, the chin here, but this is starting to get somewhere. It's not just useful for like... Uh, the final texture prepare, uh, preparations on a portrait. It is also just more broadly useful for photo restoration. Now, I will, in a moment, after I'm done with this, show something that may seem sacrilegious to many, and that is the usage of AI. Now, before you get your panties in a bunch, like, the thing is, just using AI to somewhat help you with photo restoration does not uh, mean that you should solely rely on it. In fact, you will need to do more work even after you throw something into AI. But you already, uh, as you can see, need to do work, generally need to do work before you throw something into it. Because if you don't, what you'll get generally not that good, or at least not as good as it could be. So... For your own sake, and, and I'm not talking even from here a philosophical perspective, for your own sake, don't rely on AI to do even most of the work for you. You will need to rely on it for like small steps, such as like sharpening the lips here, that, sure, but for the most part, you will need to do this on your own. And now that like my burn tool is on a highlight, so I guess I will show you how to burn this out. So basically, you try to match the shape of these uh, parts of the body here. It is good to have reference pictures on hand, but I've done this so much uh, and so many times that I don't think I need them anymore. But if you're just starting out with photo restoration, definitely have reference pictures of especially people that look similar, but even people that don't look that much like the person you're restoring is still like better than nothing at the start. Trust me, I struggled quite a lot back when I was beginning with this. It would be useful if um, you did it, and good for you if you didn't do that to yourself as well. <laughs> now, you might say, oh, but some of this is like bullshit, and, you know, this wasn't like so strong. 
Sure. And you know how we deal with this? We duplicate the bottom layer again, uh, or rather the second layer, and then we apply a mask uh, on to the top layer, and we just, you know, slightly erase this. Now, there's, there's a way to only slightly erase it, which is to change the opacity of our brush to like 20% or 10%. Depends on your need here and there, but uh, somewhere in that ballpark. And as you can see, it's worked. Like I said before, I will caution heavily from overusing AI. It's something I've seen a lot, especially in Hui 4 photo restorations, but also elsewhere. Uh, th there's a subreddit I found at some point that some of it was pretty good, but like saw the rest of it. Oh my god, there was like some real bad examples of photo restoration. So mainly uh, due to overusing AI. Remember, don't throw something into AI twice, ever. If there was like already artifacts that AI put into something in the first place, throwing it in again is going to ruin it even more. So don't do it for your own sake and for and honestly for the sake of historical preservation as well. This is something I really want to get a point across here that um, don't, I, I've seen this happen on Wikipedia a fair bit. A lot of new sources that have arrived onto Wikipedia have been just AI, poorly AI upscaled in that photographs and that's not great for historical preservation. It's also not good in the long term because having like actual original photographs is a lot better even for, if you want to upscale something in the future with a better upscaler because if there's an already an upscale photo but you don't have the original then it's going to ruin a lot of things for you. Moving on to the next stage because this is also going to be a part of like Generally, you making Hoi 4 portraits, although if you are not doing that, this should be enough. You stop at this phase and then you throw it into AI. But here, I will put an addendum. Add highlights, strategic highlights at that, if you're making a Hearts of Iron 4 portrait. Now, some people have said that I overdo highlights, and they're wrong. That's the short of it. The way you do highlights generally is look at areas that are like the brightest on your image or would be the closest to the camera like the point of the nose and you just carefully or per, I personally prefer strength 1% to 4% on highlights the dodge tool but you just carefully increase the highlights you and like like I said you need to be precise with this, in, at least in my opinion, because if you're not, you can end up in a situation where you overdo it. Once you overdo it, that's like, it's really difficult to undo it. You know, Maybe it would be for the best that I did smudge the lips a bit. Uh, when, when you're smudging textures, it's, um, it all depends on like what way they run. So lips, you need to smudge them in the horizontal direction. And the nose, you need to smudge it vertically, for example. But then you get situations like cheeks, which are a lot more difficult to deal with. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. I just often resort to the spot healing brush tool. It's pretty decent. Like, it's not the best thing ever, but it's, it is still really good. So, you'll want to definitely use that at some points. Try it out a bit. Play with it. So you get a feel for how it works. Right, so, we're not quite done here. Mainly because the shirt is still still sucks, and we still need to throw this into AI to sharpen some things here. Now you can yourself sharpen it; it is possible to do. I've seen plenty of people do it, in fact, but that would take you hours. And <sighs> yeah, 
and it's not really the most important part of the process eh, eh, overall either. It's kind of, it's just kind of tedious. So if you don't want to use AI, that is the way you would do it is with the sharpen tool and like slowly but surely add re-adding detail into this. But I'm not going to be here for hours. I have studies to get to back, so I think it's fine for people to use AI. All right, you black and white this so, uh, because uh, an, an annoying thing with the smudge tool and also the sharpen tool is that they do add a bit of color into pixels around them, a little bit of variation. Now, it's not that much, but it's still annoying to me and can sometimes mess with uh, the AI if you throw it into it, right? So copy this into on, onto here and then export as, I don't know, export as PNG 